I'm going to show you how to set up a receptionist that can answer any customer's questions, qualify any leads, and schedule any appointment for your customers 24-7, and even escalate to a phone call to the customers when there's an emergency or when a quote gets overly complicated. So let's try it out. So imagine now we're in the settings of a plumbing business where it's an out of office hours, let's say it's now 6 p.m. and a customer's try to text your plumbing uh, phone number. In this case, we're using Telegram, but just imagine it also works for WhatsApp, Instagram, and other social media channels. So let's say, hi there. Hi there, thanks for contacting Plum Perfect. How can I help you today? Um, yeah, so I want to schedule uh, an appointment with, uh, with a plumber. Can you briefly describe the problem for me? Yeah, so I got a small kitchen drip. Okay, I can show your technician, so you do that. Before it's time, can you get your phone name and email address? Yeah. Yeah, sure. So it's Edwin and email is one two three and actually just just use mine uh, at gmail.com. It's flat A one two three high street. Yeah, so it's checking for the available slots in the area. So it's at um, available next week, uh, Monday at 10 a.m., Tuesday at 2 p.m. Did any of those work for you? Yeah, sure. Uh, how about Tuesday at 2 p.m.? Perfect. You selected Tuesday at 2 p.m.? I'm booking that for you now. All set, the appointment's confirmed. If you need to make any changes, nice. So that we just booked the appointment. And let's say now we imagine where my home suddenly, you know, the small kitchen drips suddenly turns into a big flooding, like due to some, some sort of issues uh, in the kitchen. So like, help, my, the kitchen is now uh, sinking. Now the urgent situation, I'm connecting you with Laura. Our first response is to be right away. Before I do that, can you provide your phone number so you can reach your prompt me? That's four four seven four nine two four. I'm just gonna give them my phone number. So as, as you can see, I've got a phone number calling. All account. You can remove this message at any. Hello, Edwin. This is Laura from Plum Perfect. How are you doing today? I am calling because you texted us earlier about an urgent kitchen sinking issue. I want to make sure we address this as quickly as possible. If this is an emergency, the most important thing to do right now is to shut off your home's main water supply to prevent further damage. The main shutoff valve is usually a wheel or lever located in your utility closet, basement, or on an outside wall. Please let me know if you need help locating it. Can you confirm if this is an emergency? And is yeah, yeah, so it? it is an emergency, yeah. Um, I'll try to locate it now. Can you please help me find it? I, I, I don't know where, to, where everything is. Just guide me through, please. Thank you for confirming, Edwin. Since you mentioned this is an agency and you are trying to locate an email, I am unable to assist with email or related. No, experience. not 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 emails, not emails. Like, I'm, you know how you tell me to like turn off the thing. Like, I, what are you telling me to turn off again? I can't remember. Got it, Edwin. No worries. I'm here to help. To shut off your home's main water supply, look for the watt main shutoff valve. It is usually located in one of these places. One. Oh, you mean the you mean the valve? Right, right, right. I got it now. Um, yeah, it's so it's probably in my basement to be honest. Uh, I will go have a look now. Got it, Edwin. Please take your time to check your basement for the main shutoff valve. Remember, it is usually a wheel you turn clockwise or a lever you turn ninety degrees to stop the water flow. Once you have turned it off, let me know, and I will confirm the next steps for you. If you need any further guidance while you are looking, I am here to help. Yeah, I've, I've turned it off. Thanks. Great job, Edwin. It's 
sounds like you have successfully shut off the water supply. Well done. This will help minimize any further damage. Now I will confirm your address. Flat A, 123 High Street, and dispatch a technician to your location immediately. Can you please say yes to confirm this is the correct address? Yeah, I mean, it is the correct address. Thank you for confirming, Edwin. We have your address as one flat A, Wonder 23 High Street. I will now dispatch a technician to your location. You will receive a text message shortly with a tracking link to monitor their arrival. Please keep your phone line free, as the technician may also try to contact you directly. Thank you for choosing Plum Perfect. We will see you soon. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, so as you can see, like it's trying to it escalate because I said it was an emergency and therefore it escalates from a text agent, which is the chat agent that I'm having, to a voice agent that's like having a companion like that's a assistant immediately solving my problem. So let's just go over how I come around building this. So we use a platform called NAN, which essentially is a automation workflow platform. So the first step that I did in building this build is first of all, we need to build something called the AI agent. Now, if you notice, I've been using Telegram as like the main platform that we've been using. But of course, we can use other things as well. Like, as I, as I mentioned, you can use WhatsApp if you want. So in this case, you would just select on the WhatsApp. You would just say on mass trigger on message. And you would just need to set up your WhatsApp business API account. Uh, the same way you can, well, not the same way, but, but essentially, it works exactly the same as a Telegram trigger. But for this demo, I'm just gonna use Telegram. And now, once the Telegram, a trigger, receives a user's message, so when I, I, you connect to your Telegram account, it triggers a message, which means when I send a message, which you saw earlier, from earlier, so you can see that I say hi there, and therefore it responds, right? So you can see that once it receives the message, so it then passes through the AI agent step within NAN. And the way that we construct this prompt is we have the user prompt, which is the message that the user, aka me, uh, sends to the telegram. And we have the system prompt, which is the system message. So we are imagining we're a plumbing use case where it is a plumbing assistant, right? So you're Tom, the plumb perfect automated assistant, first point of contact for incoming customer text message and web chats, primary purpose is to provide immediate vision and helpful support, right? So again, you just teach them what the functions are, which is the answering questions, you know, set your appointments, but here's the key. When does it escalate to the voice callings, right? It's for urgent emergencies or complex high value jobs, you must identify the situation, capture all the required information and seamlessly escalate to Laura, which is the voice agent for the phone call. So we're adding this extra step so that when things happen or when things get complicated, we can always use a voice calling, like phone caller to call the customers because if it's much easier to communicate through over the phone rather than like we typing back and forth, right? And it also makes the customers more at ease, for example, for example if there's an emergency that's in, in the situation that, that we are just provided. And you set the persona and tone and that's pretty much it, right? And you have the prompt and now it has different tools. The first one is the chat model, right? We are, in this particular one, we're using GPT-40. The reason why is because, rather than Falcon 1, is because I want it to be slightly more emotionally intelligent but you can stick with 4.1, like it literally doesn't really matter. And for the memory, now within NAN, this memory actually stores the conversational history. So you can see like how many past interactions the model receives as context. That just means that I can actually store um, the past 20 turns of conversations uh, in the, within this agent so it remembers what I said in the past as context. Now there are different tools within NAN. An AI agent can have access to different tools. So how an AI agent works is that you're given the prompt. So you're given kind of the instructions on how the AI should think and behave and when to activate its tools. And these tools are basically arsenals within the AI agent and the agent then decides when to use which tool. In this case, we have the Google Canada. Let's start with the Canada is the easiest one. The check availability. This tool checks the slot, run this tool to check one slot availability that the user wants, which 
previously remember when they talked to the Telegram, it was checking when's the available, like when when's the available slot. It returns all the available slots to the customer, as you saw, and it, and when the customer confirms, which in my case was Tuesday, it then go ahead and check runs to if the user is busy and we need to find more available slots. So, if the slots that I suggest was not actually a good time for them, then it will suggest another available slot. But in that, in my case, it was available, so we just go on ahead and immediately book the appointment, right? For for the which is essentially schedule a plumber to come to my house to have a look, essentially. Now the second tool, which is the Pinecone factor sort. Now what is that? Well, essentially, remember, I told you the agent was able to answer any questions that I might have. How? Well, because you know, imagine you're in Plum Perfect and you have a lot, list of different policies. You have a list of different uh, services packages that the user might want to ask. How does it know? How does it have the knowledge? Well, this is where it comes from. So. I actually gone ahead and actually made a document called Plum Perfect document. It's just a short document about like some made up policies and also services that the plumbing services provide. I then uploaded the document into something called Pinecone. Now, if you didn't know what Pinecone is, I can literally show you here. Pinecone, it is a vector database that can store documents. Now, if, the, if you haven't heard of it, don't worry too much. Like just go to pinecone.io and you just click sign up to create your account. But I've already done that, so I'm just going to log in, just kind of to show you what it's like. And by the way, I've done a video kind of more extensively on specifically Pinecone and knowledge base, which by the time you're watching this video should be the previous video that I've done. I will just also link it in the description as well, so you can go and have a look as well if you want to dive deep into it. But essentially, right, I have created an index, right? An index, think of it just like a database where you store things. And I've created one called NAND. Within here, you can see that I already upload the document, the Plum Perfect document, into this database, right? Now, it has different chunks, right? Different chunks. So the reason why that we're doing this is so that once we actually upload the Plum Perfect document to the database, then the agent, remember, have access of this specific factor, so which is database, have this have access to this database tool, so it can always reference the Plum Perfect document inside this database to answer any questions that customers might have. This is how the AI agent was able to answer any questions the customers have about the specific services they have. Now, the specific details, like, don't worry too much, like, you literally just click on, you just go on Pinecone, and you just, basically use the add documents to factor store note, right? Um, I've already done a video on this, so I'm not gonna too deep dive too deep into it, but essentially you would need to create your own embedding, meaning it's a way to convert documents into numbers, into factors. That's how the agent actually was able to retrieve information because AI agent, right, by itself, they don't actually read letters or English like we do. AI agents take information in using something called vectors, which are essentially numbers in, num in numerical format. So the embedding actually, on a high level, convert the words into numbers. And this default data loader loads the document into Pinecode, into the database, using a test split method called recursive. Don't, don't worry too much about it. It's just a default, like standard, standardized way to load the knowledge base into the document. And now, because we've uploaded into the Pinecone, as you as you see, like with all these different chunks, like the hours of operation, right, Saturday, blah, blah, blah. now I can always access this tool to answer the customer's questions. That's how we do the FAQ in here, right? And yeah, and then you say, say to trigger this when you don't know the answer to the question, uh, or when the customer wants to ask more about plumbing service, package, price, or general figures. Cool. And now this is the fun part, right? You see that it escalates from a chat agent to a voice agent. How was it able to do that? Well, by accessing to a tool called voice agent. The voice agent, basically, we add a description of trigger this whenever a customer needs to needs exceed the scope of a simple text-based interaction. This occurs in three primary situations. First, for any clear emergency, such as reports of a burst pipe, flooding, my case, gushing water, where immediately verbal instruction in dispatch are critical. 
Second, for any complex or high value jobs that require detailed quote, consultation, on site assessments such as a new water heater installation, bathroom renovation, or any project that goes beyond a standard repair. So essentially, you activate the voice agent when it gets too complicated or when it's an emergency that it's much easier to communicate over the phone as opposed to over text, right? Imagine, like, you know, that kind of, I'm sure that happens all the time when there's a customer who's really frustrated at three in the morning, you know, the, everyone is asleep, you have no one to talk to about the problem, right? Sure, like this chat agent, it's good. Like you can talk to the chat agent, but it feels much, from a customer experience perspective, it makes the customer more at ease when you have a voice agent just now that's helping them, actually helping them on the phone, like a human would, but like outside of business, like obviously I was essentially. And once it activates the voice agents, then it will go and execute this workflow, essentially. Well, actually it's the same, but actually this workflow. And the voice agent, that the part, is actually powered by voice flow, which I would go in a minute. So all it does is send an API request to initiate a voice flow instance uh, by passing the information such as the which phone number, it asks for the phone number, the name, the email, the address, the job description, which is what exactly went wrong, and the reason for the escalation, which in my case is the kitchen sink. So it passes all that information that's being captured by the chat agent, by the Telegram chat agent, and send this API request, this, this basically a HTTP request to initiate the outbound phone call to the customer. And this is done using voice flow. So if you haven't, no, if you didn't have the term of it before, voice flow is a conversational agent platform which allows you to build this conversational agents both chat based and voice based and in this in our use case it's voice based so how this works is initially you extract the user phone number right using some code and from here you will have the general agent so you said the ai voice assistant is your lawyer your lawyer, highly experienced and empathetic pump perfect dispatch assistant First point of contact for outbound calls triggered by customer's test message. Your primary purpose is instantly train incoming requests, provide critical instructions during emergencies, and qualify complex jobs before connecting the customer to a live point book agent. So you can see that it's a lot of voice persona and all the different speakings, which I'm not gonna go into, but essentially, this agent is able to take in the information that we pass from the Telegram chat agent to reference that to provide context for this voice agent and actually use this information to help the customers like you did like you saw with I did with the kitchen sink like you need to turn off the water supply da, da, da. right like, so it helps the customers to actually achieve the task over the phone it's much easier to be over the phone rather than testing back and forth so that's the whole purpose of this and you can see like there's a route to the appointment booking agent right but the reason why that exists is because the appointment booking is when you want a highly complicated job such as the bathroom renovation beyond a standard repair, whereas in the demo that I showed you earlier, it was built for kind of like, a, I showed in the use case was like an emergency, right? The kitchen sink, so the dispatch was immediate dispatch. So there's a, so there's a difference there, but then if it's a highly complicated job, you would just have access to the um, appointment when the user would like to book an appointment, and this appointment specialist agent will just check the Canada for the availability from the plumber side and still schedule an appointment over the phone with the customer. So hopefully that kind of gives you a high level idea of what, how we can kind of think about setting up this receptionist, 24 seven receptionist that can be the first point of contact for, for the customers. They can actually help you guys take on kind of these complicated like scenarios, complicated quotes or like, you know, uh, emergency situations or even appointment settings, etc., all automated using chat based agent as you see on Telegram or WhatsApp and this voice agent over the phone. Any questions, let me know. And if you're looking to build kind of something similar for your business or you want some help to build this kind of system for you, let me know and just book a call with the link in the description. Hope you enjoy this and I'll see you in the next one.